Hi guys, I'm Shmi and today it's finally time to reveal to you the mystery Shmi-mobile, the one that I've been keeping secret, teasing a little bit, the sort of quirky fun car that I've not really given very many clues at all what this is going to be. It is the car that is going to wear the 87 TB number plate. So the Shmi plates that you've seen, the SH10 MEE, the SH14 MEE on the GT4 behind me, the 15 that's going on the LT Spider, those are going to be now reserved for my supercars, an 87 TB is going to go on something a little bit fun. So this car, um, I haven't really given very many hints yet what it's about, but let's think along the lines of the Morgan three-wheeler. It's something fun, quirky, a little bit older, a little bit different, something I've always had a soft spot for, and I just thought it's summertime, YOLO. You only live once, why not? Maybe some of you guys will like it. Maybe some of you guys will think this is the stupidest thing ever. If you do, don't worry, because very, very soon, I'm going to be announcing the other two supercars that I have on order, the two more very special cars coming later this year. And uh, of course, if you followed recently, you saw that I also applied for the Ford GT. That's not one of those two. So I've got two pretty cool cars to announce and show you in the very near future. But today is about picking up the mystery car. So what is it? The mystery car is a Schmini, a mini, a classic mini. And we're gonna go inside now and check it out. This is GC Motors, the mini specialist, where I am picking up my car. So let's have a quick walk through all classic minis everywhere before we get to mine. And I will show you and tell you a little bit more about it. But these ones are pretty special, like this one particularly. This was the last car to leave the John Cooper Works factory. It's 65,000 pounds, 32 miles on the clock. That is a pretty special Mini. Now, a lot of people might be very confused by these things, but the Mini is incredibly iconic. What a car, ran from 1969 to 2001. Special cars, this is a turbo one. And it was the first front wheel drive car. There's a lot of story behind them. And you can see why I popped down here to choose my Mini, because there are so many to have a look at. All sorts of ages, types. And I wanted a more sort of recent car. I wanted one of the sort of later builds, 2000, 2001, the Rover generation. Um, more recent obviously means slightly more reliable, things slightly more finished with the car. Um, I wanted the Sport Pack, so it has the wide arches, um, a loud exhaust on it maybe. And um, as I come through, we're getting close to my car. You can see this is basically a mini lover's playground. There are so many cars to have a look at here. Amazing if you're into this, absolutely amazing. And in front of me now, is my new car, which I'm just seeing now for the first time with it as my car. Are you ready for this? This is the Schmini. British racing green with the silver stripes, silver roof, 1.3 litre engine, 62 horsepower and wearing 87 TB. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again from W.E. Hickson. He is a British icon. This car is a British icon. Mini try, tried and tried again all the way through to the current minis. I even owned a Countryman not that long ago. But this is it. This is my new car. This is the surprise and definitely not what I think many of you expected in any way, shape or form. The Schmini. Okay. This is probably confusing the daylights out of a lot of people. Let me explain a little bit more. It's summer, I wanted something fun, something different. Like I said, I've always had a soft spot for these. I just wanted to try it. And this seemed like the perfect opportunity. I've got a space in my garage. I wanted to share something new, something different. My first sort of older car, well, it's actually my second older car. I had a, an old Subaru when I was 19 or 20 or so. But this is gonna be a new little fun story, a little mini adventure, sharing with you what it's like driving well, something a little bit different. So uh, this is this is going to be quite fun. This car then is 15 or 16 years old. It's got nearly 70,000 miles on it. I just turn off the immobilizer and start it up. Uh, very old school, probably cool. Let's turn the radio off. Um, yeah, here we are. Black and silver leather. The uh, sort of my finish of choice with the silver dash, 
black and silver steering wheel, got the four speed manual, the uh, gear sticks nicely the wrong way around. Um, four speed manual gearbox. This is gonna be like the most insane old school adventure ever. Good old windy windows. I actually quite like the door handles. Yeah. That's, uh, that's quite nice, quite fun. Little uh, glove box. This is just bizarre. I've had to uh, install a cigarette socket with some USB ports as well. Then we've got the air conditioning control here, which is um, moderately hilarious. This is all so manual and old school. Got the lights and hazards. This is uh, all kind of funny. There we go, hazards on. Indicators work the normal way. Um, manual lights on. I I've actually got to do some major learning. Wipers on that side and the horn. <laughs> Um, that's quite fun, the mini air freshener. So yeah, this is going to be an interesting adventure. First though, I'm going to drive this back home, back towards London. So uh, bring it on, the mini adventure starts here. This is hilarious, this is going to be so much fun. Can you imagine driving this car in London? Well, I will be later on today. Beats any kind of modern extreme thing for driving in the city just because it's quirky, it's got a charm to it. It's no, it's just, it's just going to be smiles. All smiles and smiles per mile, that's where it is at. <laughs> and we're rolling in the Schmini for the first time, and I know this is a seriously oddball choice, and you're all probably wondering why on earth, and it will never make sense. I just wanted to give this a go, and I'm already discovering why. It's just completely old school. Remember, this thing came out nearly 50 years ago, the first sort of version of it, although this is a little bit more updated, but it's just like back to basics completely and one of the most fun experiences that I had was when I had my Morgan three-wheeler for a bit just for a couple of months through summer because it's just different it's just completely you have to reset what you're thinking a car is um, versus sort of modern stuff because well it's everything is completely different the way you go about it and it, this is like quirky as you can imagine I'm sat off center my knees are banging into the steering wheel We've got four gears and the gearbox is hard to sort of work out where they are because none of them are straight forwards or back. For third, you have to push over to the right. And it's just, I don't know, it just puts a smile on your face. And that's exactly what it's about. The whole smile from around thing. Gosh, that was noisy. Um, we've got a little bit of a traffic jam here. That's not so cool. Um, I've sort of been warned of all the things I need to watch out for, the car overheating and that kind of stuff and um, things like that. But this is, uh, this is a lot of fun. Bubble along in traffic. The clutch is a little bit funny. It's very, very different to the GT4 in every way you could imagine. This car does not drive the same. Um, peculiarities of the gear stick being the wrong way around. The steering wheel's never straight. Standard stuff, but we've got brand new Yoko tires. Um, they're pretty good for this car. Sport pack doesn't drive as well as the normal Mini, but it looks so much cooler, so that's why I wanted it. And yeah, just balling on through. So far so good then, and now because it's funny, I've shared a little photo on Instagram, um, a little bit of a teaser. Let me just spin the camera around and show you this. I have shared a teaser of the colour. Literally just a zoomed in photo, yes you can see that the paint's not perfect, it is a 15, 16 year old car. And we've got people guessing away, so let's have a quick look at the comments here. Um, because. There are all sorts of amusing things. And firstly, my caption says that tomorrow I'm revealing that. That's the video you're watching now. Um, Lambo Hurricane, Bentley Concept Car. Um, have people already guessed it? I have actually answered yes, people have already guessed it. SVR, Aston Martin, Exigery 6. Now this is where you have to think about the clues I've given. I said, it's not a car that's ever been the focus of a Shmi 150 video. So no, 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 no. You get the point. Um, I said it's fun, it's quirky, it's cheap, 
Caterhams, good guesses. We've had a few Caterhams and TVRs. That was, cert that was certainly possible. Um, GT12, I said it's not a flagship supercar. Um, Fiat 124 Spider, not out yet, not possible. Um, Donkervort featured. AMG GTR, not out yet. Morgan Plus 4, featured at Geneva. GT12, Alpinas, could be an Alpina. They like their greens, that's not impossible. More guesses at Caterham, lots of Aston Martins, but not very specific. Um, there were lots of guesses earlier for Bentayga until I replied, it's not a Bent Bentley Bentayga, because I did a couple of drives in those earlier in the year. I do like the Bentayga, there we go. I, somebody wrote, I'm 110% sure, sure that it's a Bentayga, and I replied, I'm 111% sure that it's not a Bentayga. Well, that's actually being a little bit cheeky, because in my books, you can't be more than 100% sure of anything, because you cannot have more than 100%. That is not possible. But yeah, that was quite fun, teasing you all. So, I mean, don't forget, by the way, that there are other exciting cars coming. This is just a bit of fun. And right now on the drive home so far, it is proving really fun. Off we go again then. And I've done a little bit of driving now, so I'm getting a little bit used to it. I always want to have the window down because the air con in here is a little bit weak. I've got a list of things I need to get sorted. You know, it's, a, it's an old car, there's little niggles here and there. You can pay, as you saw, crazy amounts of money and buy a car that's delivery mileage, presumably bang on point, but that's not really what it's about. It's about the charm of, and quirkiness of being a little bit uh, a little bit unpredictable. I've got my GPS running so that I can um, obviously see the exact speedo and things. It overreads quite a lot. It's all a little bit fun, but this is, for me, is a completely new learning experience. I know about the supercars, I know about the luxury cars, but I don't know so much about this kind of thing that you've got to look after and learn and tinker with yourself and play with and get to sort of understand. So I've got a lot of uh, things I need to sort of learn and discover on this adventure, and I'm sure I'm going to get there, like how to get the aircon running, because eventually I want the window closed, even though it's nice, it's tiny. This car is absolutely tiny, it's so funny. Like looking in the mirrors behind me, the GT4 just sticks out massively on both sides. But you can still do that. Definitely no auto blipping in here, not even close. But I feel like this is just going to be entertaining to drive. It's exactly the point. It's just a completely different thing. It's quirky, it's silly, it doesn't make sense, but you only live once, and if you don't try these things, you don't know what you like and what you don't like. I'm going to be able to park it in London without worrying. I said that a few times. Oh, where's the gear? There we go. A few times in some of my clues. Ooh. Like I said, dodgy clutch, I need to get used to that. Um, I said in a few of my videos, oh, sorry, a few of my social posts that um, it's a car that I'm just going to be happy parking wherever and doing whatever with, not worrying about necessarily in the same way I might with some of the supercars. Right, we're coming towards the motorway, so let's wind up the window. And, um, you know, I could even probably park it backwards to the curb just for fun. Um, sometimes, maybe I'll try that. Um, bumps along, small little thing, you kind of expect that. Um, but basically, whenever you drive this, you're just always going to have this on your face because it's ridiculous. It's just absolutely hilarious. Right, up to the motorway. Let's go. Can we get 70 miles an hour? The top speed's like 90. Um, it should get there. Um, I don't actually know how fuel efficient or anything like that it is. It can't be too bad. Um, I just feel tiny on the motorway. I feel like all the other cars that Freelander that just went past me is huge. Um, Let's keep going and back towards London. So now that we're back driving around London, I'm uh, experiencing what I'm going to be using this car for. And with all these speed bumps here, I can literally just squeeze around the side of them all, which is amazing. And I'm watching Mark in my mirror obviously have to um, take the GT4 very slowly over them all because of the front splitter. So uh, this feels like this car's natural habitat. Back having fun, being a little bit silly and just whatever. I mean, it's for smiles, that's what it's all about, and I'm certainly having fun. I think, you know, it's exactly kind of the bit of the bit of enjoyment and bit of unusual excitement I wanted to have with this thing. I've got to know it a little bit better during this drive and understand how the aircon works and different bits and bobs. But it's uh, it's holding together very nicely, and it's uh, it's a good little toy. I'm going to enjoy driving this a lot more. And we're home, so I've parked the Mini next to the FF, probably the two most impractical and unlikely daily drivers to have in a garage together. But that's life, I like buying cars that speak to me, mean something, and the FF I absolutely love, I drive it loads in uh, seven or eight months, I've already done about seven or eight thousand miles in it. The Mini though now has arrived, and I first wanted a classic Mini years ago, about good six or seven years ago, 
back when I had my BMW 1 Series, I think, um, but I didn't have the means or possibilities of running multiple cars back then, and now it just seemed like the right time. It was calling, and I wanted a summer toy to play around with. So the Mini is here. It might stay around a lot longer. I don't know. There's a massive Mini community. I look forward to maybe taking it to some events and getting to know some people out there. Just having fun at driving the car. It's also a little bit of a, a summer filler because the 675 LT Spider was due to be, in fact, it was due to be here a month or two ago, but before now, um, and it's been delayed. There are lots of delays going on at the McLaren factory, so it's been pushed back, and unfortunately, it looks like it might even miss um, the bulk of summer. But well, I mean, we're now past the summer solstice, um, but it looks like it might be pushed towards August, sadly. Um, but I do have exciting things planned when it does come. And like I said, also, I've got two other cars that I'm going to be announcing in the next week, so watch this space. Both very, very cool cars, and I'm sure you're going to like them. And I hope you're going to be enjoying this mini adventure as I go off and do some stuff with the car, the 87 TB, the sort of flagship car, no, not quite, um, the flagship in the sense of the Schmied plates on all of the others. Um, and I just thought it was kind of fun to have a number plate worth as much as the car on it. Um, yeah, there we go. This has been the collection day of the mystery Schmiemobile, the one that everyone was trying to guess, and nobody was doing a very good job of getting right. But it's here now, British Racing Green, an iconic color on an iconic car, on a new thing, a new fun car for me to enjoy, something that's, well, a little bit, I guess, more normal in a way, but still quirky and fun alongside uh, the other cars I'm very lucky to enjoy and drive and share videos with you. Um, about them, what they're like. So this will be up there. This is the new Schmimobile, the Schmini. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch up with you again very soon. Cheers! You know, Audi have released the upgraded version of the RS6, the RS6 uh, Performance, which is what this Of course, we've got the Brabus 500, G500 4x4.